heard cases come to a verdict, come to an end, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Greg, why don't you tell us about the video we're going to watch? Yeah, we're going to watch a couple of minutes of this video from the verdict. We're not going to watch the entire 42 questions being read. It's more of the same. We'll cover what we see here and tie that back to the entire case. Is this the verdict of the jury? Yes. All right. Is it unanimous? Yes. Thank you, sir. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Has Mr. Depp proven by a greater weight of the evidence that question, the statement was made or published by Ms. Heard? Answer, yes. The sta question, the statement was about Mr. Depp. Answer, yes. Question, the statement was false. Answer, yes. Question, the statement has a defamatory implication about Mr. Depp. Answer, yes. Question, the, de the defamatory implication was designed and intended by Ms. Heard. Answer, yes. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. As against Amber Heard, we, the jury, award compensatory damages in the amount of $10 million. As against Amber Heard, we, the jury, award punitive damages in the amount of $5 million. Do you find that Ms. Heard has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, no. Do you find that Ms. Heard has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Do you find that Ms. Heard has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, no. As against John C. Depp II, we, the jury, award compensatory damages in the amount of $2 million. As against John C. Depp II, we, the jury, award punitive damages in the amount of $0. Members of the jury, if this is your verdict, please answer yes. If this is not your verdict, please answer no. Juror number six. Yes. Juror number 10. Yes. Juror number 15. Yes. Juror number 16. Yes. Juror, juror number 22. Yes. Juror number 27. Yes. Juror number 29. Yes. All right. I do find that the jury's verdict is unanimous. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, the first thing we're going to hear from everyone is these are actors. Yes, they are actors, but they still have the same biological systems you do. Fight, flight, I'll, I'll abbreviate it as fight or flight, impacts them the same way it does. When we watch her here, we're going to see some of that happening. You see her blink rate increase. You see her cast her eyes down and to the right as she is drawing an emotion. What's interesting for me here is I also, if you watch that little necklace, you'll see some breathing happening. And it's a little erratic, like she's emotional. This emotion is believable, unlike what she's done for the past two weeks on the stand. This is more, I've watched more of her than I ever want to remember and more of Johnny Depp than I ever want to remember. And I like him. So what I see here is her, throughout this trial, her choices of diction, what she says, pitch, tone, and cadence were not believable. Her social response, how she dealt with the attorneys, was difficult, and she showed two faces, one to the attorney and one to the jury, as she mugged for or cheesed for the jury. Um, we also saw some outright avoidance and resistance to the question that brings up the interrogator in me and made me wanted to crawl all over her. And in these places, I saw her more emotional about disrespect. Go watch the videos. I, I saw more disrespect emotion than injury emotion, which made it hard for me to believe. And she swung for the fence when she talked about the things he had done to her. That makes it hard to really believe her. And then when he was deceptive, his deception was mostly around things he had said or things he had written. That ties back to the disrespect thing. So when all things are said and equal and you're looking at a he said, she said story and somebody swung for the fence, it's a little tough when she's not believable. Scott, what do you got? All right. Well, at the beginning, when they start reading the uh, the verdict, uh, reading the, the damages and stuff, we see her eyes shift back and forth really quickly. She's, I think, getting a grip on what's happening. I'm not sure what's in front of her. I don't, I don't know if there's a sheet of paper, if there's something she's reading or what. But briefly, you can see her eyes go back and forth. Her breathing rate, like you were seeing, Greg, 
saying, Greg, it does go, it, it, it's kind of odd. At some some points it speeds up, some points it slows down. And I, I agree that that might show some true emotion because the hammer is falling on it right now. And that's going to be an emotional event for you if you're in a, in a mess like this. The, the expression she has is pretty blank. A lot of people say, oh, it's a stoic expression, which I agree it is. At the same time, it's just, it's, it's almost, uh, I think she's, I don't know who she's playing to at that point, but she just looks really, really, really sad as she should. Um, her head goes down just for a second and then it comes back up. I think when she realizes she doesn't want to look like she's been defeated. And, uh, when she gets a grip on that and then, uh, at the very end, her mouth pulls back almost into a grimace, these little parts back here. And I figured it would be when, when they read the part about, um, how she gets nothing from him, how, you know, the, the, she gets com uh, the compensed, what is it? What is it? Compensatory. How do you say that correctly? Damages, whatever it is. It. Yeah. Is zero. Then you see her, her lips go back almost in a grimace, but I was expecting more of a lip purse there. Uh, when, when they said, oh, we're going to see a lip purse, but we didn't, which, which would signal or indicate that she doesn't agree with what's happening or doesn't like it. But the grimace is, as this is just as much at that point. And her blink rate, when the, um, at the end of these things, they start reading the money part of it, quite often she'll do a double blink. Not a whole lot of blinking going on, and her rate is, is fairly steady throughout, and there's, there's a space in between. She'll do a quick flutter, and then she'll do a one blink. There's a space, and a quick flutter, and one blink. It's, it's a little bit odd, but then again, that's an odd situation to be in, so I'm sure she's feeling a little bit, um, a little, little bit out of place at that point. Chase, what do you got? So, let's, uh, Greg, you brought up that, that necklace kind of moving. There's two places we can really breathe from. If you're watching this, you can try it out right now. We can breathe from our chest up here where you can see the chest rise and fall, or you could breathe through your abdomen, which I'm doing right now, and you can't really see that. So when we're more relaxed, we're more likely to breathe into our abdomens. And you see that throughout this trial, she's been using her abdomen to breathe, and you can see it. Finally, the stress is high enough to where she's doing chest breathing. You can see the breathing rate go up, and you see the location go upwards as well. So it's going from abdomen to chest. Another thing I think was interesting here, <clears throat> right when the jury's coming back into the courtroom, she adjusts her posture and and starts adjusting her hair because she knows this is a either a, the jury's going to need to look at me differently, even though the verdict is done. But I think there's a camera moment. Like this is the big moment that's going to be all over Fox and CNN and all that stuff. So that was priority one. And when we see this eye flutter, you'll see a couple of blinks there. That's kind of what the brain does when we have a lot of stuff opening up worth. So all of a bunch of apps are opening at once. So she's probably opening. What are the consequences of this? How is this going to work? What is this going to make me look like? What are the news repercussions of this? Maybe I can get a book deal out of this, all this like consequential stuff that she's thinking. And this is the brain trying to shut down those apps that are running in the background. They're competing for that person's attention or, or their time. And one other one there is we don't, see the emotion of a victim who has been victimized a second time in the courtroom. We see shame. We see a person who's kind of lamented and reserved into taking their licks, so to speak, as we might say in the South, but we're not seeing, I'm not seeing if this was an innocent person who was forced into this and then lost a trial against this person, I, I would expect to see very, very different emotions. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so we don't uh, consult with each other beforehand, and it's interesting that we've all got the same ideas, so I'm going to be very reiterative of what everybody's said. Just like you said, they're chase preening beforehand, so there's a sense of needing to look right as this comes in, but I don't think she knows at this point which way it's going to go for her. I don't think it's a surprise for any of us here. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting that the Victorian actresses during melodrama would wear a necklace of some sort, often with a jewel, so the light would catch it and the audience could watch the breathing unconsciously and join in with that and experience these big emotions of melodrama. So it's great that she has that necklace because we can read her breathing almost exactly. So just like a melodramatic audience, breathe along with her and see what you get. At the start, I get a sense of excitement, okay? Which 
which is to be accept, expected. The breathing is, as you say, Chase, high in the chest. Okay, there's going to be some adrenaline there, I would say. And there's a sense of excitement. First, um, first call comes in of a yes, and I think there's a breathing shift. It shifts up. It starts going faster. Next verdict, verdict comes in. And there's a second shift. It goes even further than that. And in my view, if it shifted again and she went faster, she would be close to hyperventilation at that point. But why don't you test it out? Just see what it's like to breathe along with that. What happens to how stable you feel and think, well, if it shifted another gear, how stable would I be? So as verdicts come in after that, I think we see this in that the breathing doesn't go up, but we start to see these little palpitations in the breathing. I reckon that's panic try it along to her. She's starting to move towards this panicked breathing because my guess is, is she's doing the calculations in her mind of now, how much is this going, uh, going to cost? And I think we also see these erratic, um, flutter movements in the, in the eyes and that head fall, because at some point she is getting closer to that kind of give up collapse situation, but she pulls herself together on that and fronts it up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, high emotions during this panic and the brain just trying to work out how she's going to deal with this. That's what I've got on that one. Back to you, Scott. I've got a quick one for Greg. Yeah. Greg, uh, if you don't know this, Greg has been a long time teaching resistance to interrogation and all kinds of cool spy kind of stuff. But what did you make of the attorney vigorously writing down notes as if they're never going to get a copy of this? Like just like, oh, I need to I need to just continue writing. What do you think that was? Well, I'm not sure she's writing what is being said. I think she may be writing something for Amber. Don't worry. Who knows what she's writing? But if you notice, Amber's eyes dart over from her right to her left at least once. I think that's what it is. The other thing to remember is if she's feeling like, oh, now I'm in a bind. Mark, you talk about it all the time. Engage your brain, engage your brain, engage your brain. Doodle, doodle, doodle. The same thing we saw Johnny Depp doing. So I think it could be either or. Yeah, great, great catch. By the way, uh, among those things, I think, Mark, that's brilliant with the breathing piece. And it, it, Chase, there was something you mentioned going to let's just leave it at that just keep moving instead of dragging it out why not let's have it what do you no, get something he mentioned there was something he mentioned up front that i was thinking was brilliant that you caught oh the the closing apps I, let me cover that that where you talk about closing apps that mm -hmm. is the brain's natural response to uh oh i need to look out for whatever the real threat is and i think it's beautiful to, to call that out that you're shutting down all these other things so that your eyes can focus on the thing i'd love to see her pupils they're probably going so we've got five videos on this very subject on what we're talking about. And we go through the trial and you can see what happens and what we're talking about step by step with Johnny's body language and with Amber's body language. And you can compare to what we're saying to, to what the uh, turnout was in the verdict. But at the same time, it'll be good education on how to look at things as you go through situations like that, through um, um, trials, through uh, things at work, through arguments, and you can see what's happening with that. So anybody want to add anything else? Yeah, I did one thing. I did one thing for somebody who was in court. They were really nervous. I had a sheet of paper in front of them, very similar to this situation here. And they were really nervous about what's going on. And on the sheet of paper, I just had a couple of words on there. It said, being comfortable will not put you in danger. Because that's what our brains default to. That's why our body gets ready to fight. And that's why our adrenaline pumps up. Just kind of helping to remind yourself that if you're, ever feeling any kind of stress like this, just push, pushing your body into a comfortable position is not going to make you uh, in more danger. But where our brains are programmed to think that way to keep us safe, doesn't work as well in the modern world. Yeah. All right. Well, go check out our other videos and uh, see what you think about that and see if you can learn a little something about what we've seen so far. All right. I think this is good, fellas, and we'll see you next time. See you. Cheers. Sí, 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 sí.